That is the upbeat hit with it. Theme tune to Free Speech Fridays. And the last half hour of my show or so, every Friday we talk about issues with a couple of people who believe in free speech and are going to tell us what they think, what they really, really think, without fear or favour or fear of being cancelled, because no one gets cancelled. Uh, no one gets cancelled on the platform, do they? And joining us today for Free Speech Fridays is uh, a woman who I think has written an, an, an excellent article on freedom of speech, despite um, some difficulties with that. Uh, in North and South, um, and it featured, jeez, it was a good article, it had me in it. Um, Yvonne Van Dongen, uh, journalist, long-time journalist, feature writer, joins us. Yvonne, lovely to have you with us for Free Speech Fridays. Lovely to be back, Sean. Uh, I think you're mad. I'm always amazed at panels like this, that um, people have such definite opinions, mostly I'm bewildered, but, you know, that's why I become a journalist, don't you, to find things out? That's right, or to, to reinforce how little you know. And also <laughs> joining us from the left, um, the quietest man on the left, <laughs> in left-wing blogging and podcast, uh, the man who stole um, the working group title off me, Martin, and also the man who does the daily blog, of course, Martin Bomber Bradbury. How are you, Bomber? Good, comrades. How are you? Good. Now, have you and Yvonne ever met before? Um, no. I have. I've not had the opportunity to meet Yvonne. However, I believe that she is a remarkable journalist, and I <laughs> and I think that her piece in North and South is absolutely must read. Must read uh, material for everyone this month. Oh, oh, bless. Thank you, Martin. And I've enjoyed reading your rants on the blog for a long time. You always sound like you're fizzing at the bun, <laughs> well, which you. is really exciting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there is, look, there's a touch of ADHD there. I don't think there's any denying that. We're, we're, we're <laughs> <laughs> We've had... Great look, quality. I want to say, guys, we've had a remarkable week on the platform. I... Yeah. Um... I started to see, I think, over the weekend details or some clips of the Prime Minister's speech at the United Nations during her recent uh, trip there after the Queen's funeral in Britain. Um, and it surprised me because I had seen little to no coverage of the speech at the United Nations and New Zealand media. Um, we had Brendan O'Neill from Spiked on earlier in the week. We had Jonathan Ayling from the Free Speech Union in New Zealand. Those interviews... Um, have, if you like, sold like hotcakes. New Zealanders are really interested in this issue, but you wouldn't know about that speech, what I think is a disturbing speech at the UN by the Prime Minister, if you had only been consuming through mainstream New Zealand media. Yvonne, do you think our, our traditional media missed the boat on that story? Yeah, it's funny, when you said that, I thought, oh, I don't feel like I've missed out because I'd, I'd listened to it and I'd seen it on television and people had sent me clips and I read the transcript. But what was missing was a debate about it. There was no, no, nobody was talking about it. What does it mean? What did she intend to say? What was she getting at? And I think that that was what was missing. I didn't feel like I was really... Okay, so you knew that the news event had occurred, but the discourse yeah. following it hadn't occurred. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it didn't. And I wondered why. And then I looked at the speech carefully and I thought, she, it's very clever because she appeals to our sensibilities as a liberal progressive country. And we just, we love that. Mm. You know, we were against, against the nuclear war, first country to give women the vote, movement on major indigenous and human rights issues. And then she can soften us up for other initiatives that she wants to take. Um, and, get, you know, talking about the weapons of war being words or you know and the yeah that between yeah words and bullets but yeah so it it just right yeah it softens you up and it sounds quite benign actually it's just so i can see why the media almost ignored it but yeah it is mm. it is disturbing it would be good to have a talk just talk about it well i've been doing that on the platform and that's been working for us i'll be honest uh bomber even uh glenn greenwald thought the speech was was, was disturbing um, do you think our media gave it the prominence or were able to cover it and, and generate a discourse on it like the rest of the world is, ha is having? Uh, never write up uh, as spite uh, and malice what you can put down to sheer incompetence. Let's remember, this speech came out live at 5am on Saturday. Most of the newsrooms, the gutted, gutted newsrooms in this country had, what, the C-team on overnight? Um, I don't think that, I mean, 
if, if, if you put the, the story in Google search, you see a half a dozen New Zealand um, uh, uh, media did cover the story, but you're right. Where there wasn't any focus was on any of the meaning of any of this. Yeah, and, 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 and you can certainly understand that Jacinda, you know, wants to crack down on extremism online because yeah. we all want to crack down on extremism online. No, no, on, well, on, see, online. this is the debate. Does she want to crack down on extremism or anything she you doesn't like? You have to like? define it. Yeah. You have yeah. to define it. And the problem here is there is no definition of it, right? Yeah. And there is, and there is the issue. Obviously, crimes, you know, child pornography, murders that are filmed, those sorts of... Nobody wants that stuff or extreme violence, you know, extre extremist material from Islamists or white supremacists. You don't want that stuff out there circulating. But it's what is the definition of extremism. And when we look at the people who have been appointed into positions of academic research, like Professor Joanne Kidman, and we see, and, and, and she is now working in that extremism network, guiding the GCSB and the SIS on who to focus on, we see what her threshold for what she considers woke genocidal culture wars. And, and yeah. you think, well, my, would, would, would everyone who listens to the platform be on her watch list. I mean, that's how low her threshold is. And because it hasn't been defined by the government, exactly what we're doing here, um, these powers are so easily picked up by oppressive regimes around the world who are using these, you know, clamped down on extremism, mm. actually as a means of shutting down the scene and arresting activists. Yeah. Were you yeah. concerned, Yvonne, like Bomber was, about that speech and the underlying message that it gives? Yes, it was fine until it got to the part about how do you successfully end a war if people are led to believe the reason for his existence is not only legal but noble, and then she lists climate change and how do you ensure human rights are upheld when they're subjected to hateful and dangerous rhetoric and ideology. And then I keep coming back to Jim Flynn who says, even the speech of Nazis is privileged until it's a call to action. And, right. You know, and, and right. then I also remember that the hate speech, it, that, I mean, it's been acknowledged that those hate speech laws that they wanted to bring in would not have prevented the Christchurch massacre. So what is the problem not. we're trying to solve? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that was yeah. a debate yeah. that I, I kicked off and got roundly condemned by News Hub for, but I, I had the pleasure, pleasure this week of Ian Taylor coming out and saying, I get what you were saying. We yeah. have to define an enemy to justify the never-ending Orwellian war, don't we, Bomber? And this is, you know, look, I, I was someone who did actually read uh, Tarrant's manifesto. I did read what he was putting out and, 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 and the hours following the, uh, the yeah. massacre. I saw the hatred and the white supremacy and the clear ideology that he was going for, but I didn't see anywhere in his, in his very long, crazy rant, I didn't see anywhere where he was talking about the trans community, right? I didn't see anywhere he was talking yeah. about the issues that we're clamping down now and we suddenly yeah need to criminalise the misuse of pronouns to stop another extreme terror attack. Well, he didn't mention any of that. That wasn't his bag. And so I think that, I mean, look at look at the, the interesting thing with Dr. Greg Treadwell and the, the article that he put out on Newsroom recently. And he's arguing, you know, as a journalist, you don't need to have balance. Well, look, if you look at that Fire and Fury middle-class docudrama, the problem that was there was that there was absolutely no focus whatsoever on the actions of Trevor Mallard yeah. and how he provoked that yeah. into yeah. the all-out blown thing. Now, there were certainly bad faith actors yeah. there who were manipulating anger, yeah. and should they be focused on? Absolutely. But why wasn't there any focus on yeah. the Speaker of the House yeah. who triggered that bloody Yeah, well, thing I would argue because it was state-funded... I would argue because it was state-funded white propaganda. Now, Greg right, Treble, you right. may have come in late. Greg Treble, uh, we have talked about extensively on the programme this morning. I have offered him a right of reply, and I'm deeply concerned that he is teaching journalism or any sort of journalism at AUT. Uh, he did not want to engage, despite my best efforts to come on uh, this morning. I thought the article in Newsroom was deeply disturbing and part of a disturbing trend. Um, <coughs> Yvonne, is yeah. this, do we have to have this difficult conversation about free speech now? Is it time to stop saying it doesn't concern me and it's not my business anymore? Because I get the feeling from the sort of response I'm starting to get from a lot of New Zealanders that people do want to have this discussion about free speech and there is genuine concern in our communities. 
Yes, I think we always have to keep relitigating the same things, don't we? We have to mm. fight for the values. We have to fight for our democracy. We have to fight for free speech. And there is there's an authoritarian streak in all of us. You want to shut the people you don't like. You want to mm. shut them up. It's, I think that's kind of natural. But it's, you cannot give people the power to do that. We have to hear different dissenting views. And even when Jacinda said in that speech you know, about the climate change deniers, um, it, you, I don't want to hear them. I don't believe them, but I don't believe they should be banned. That's the difference. Yeah, you can't yeah. ban some of these. Hey, do you know the Greg Treble, Yvonne? No, I don't. Okay, have you no. read his newsroom? News Hub, uh, newsroom? No, I haven't. Okay. What is it? No, I will read it, though. You get yeah. onto it and read it. I mean, it's, it's a couple of minutes of your life, you'll never get back. But um, yeah. uh, And it's interesting in the context of, of the debate we are having now. And, of okay. course, look, the other thing about uh, the debate of freedom of speech or making people non-people and... You know, Voices yeah. for Freedom and the publicly funded journalism that hunted down certain local government candidates. I actually thought, guys, that all this controversy might have improved the turnout at local body <laughs> elections. But, boy, it's <laughs> pathetic. Hutt Valley, 12 to 15% are voting in the Hutt Valley. Um, or overall, it's like 35 to 38% turnout. This is pathetic. And the problem is, why bother Yvonne? If no one's going to vote. I know, it feels like that. It feels like the end of democracy. It's quite scary. I mean, can you really call it a democracy if you've got lower than 40% of people um, voting? Uh, yeah, it's terrifying, I think. And then people come up with all these reasons. You know, we could, if we had a, um, online voting, it would be better or more diverse candidates. But I don't believe that it would necessarily change things. I, I wonder if it's something to do with COVID sort of disrupting our sense of social engagement or people are just too focused on the, their own lives. It's it's really disturbing, I think. Or Very just, disturbing. I don't care who collects the rubbish and keeps the sewage yeah. going. Who gives the stuff? Yeah, and also it is bewildering when you look at the list of candidates. I mean, there's lots of them, and there's no tribal affiliation. You don't really, they're not, it's not. Oh, the yes, there. Well, they well, say there of. isn't. There always is. Well, there are. But then there's, yeah. there's other groups like Rock the Vote, and there's heaps of independents, and you, yeah. you know, you don't know who you're voting for most of the time. You don't know who these people are. They're never in the news. The, yeah. You know, the fundamental, the fundamental problem with our low turnout, our pitifully low turnout. It is how pitiful, it's pathetic, isn't it? Pretend, yeah. How can you pretend to have a mandate with barely thirty yeah. percent of the population voting? Yeah. Now, the reasons, of course, there's a lot of structural issues here in terms yeah. of poverty, people moving around a lot. Oh, hang, um, on, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, Bob. I can't you get on. away no, no, with no, no, that. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm Pe quite, poor people have got more reason to vote. There absolutely are a lot of barriers if you are poor and moving around a lot. Um, we need to remember that these council elections are run by a private company. That private company does not give two shits, short about who turns out. Watch your language. Watch your language. Better contract. <laughs> Better contract. Huh? And so what we need to do, what we need to do is, I mean, in Auckland right now, there are only eight places, eight places in all of Auckland City where you can cast a special vote. Only eight. The, 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 the people know where most of the um, polling booths are because they've had to be put inside countdowns because people don't know where their mailboxes are. There are all these structural problems to a postal vote, which is handed out to a private company. It is time for the local elections to take over, the com electoral commission to take over these elections mm. and run them properly like that we do for the national ones. There is one day of voting with bold post po polling booths all over the place that allow you to, uh, 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 to, to elect, to, to vote and enroll at the same time. We need that kind of dedication and resource yeah. because we are cheap-ass country who pays the cheapest amount to do our democracy, and it's failing. Yeah, I, I've got to say, too, here's a nice text I got through from Denise. The low voter turn it, turnout, and I love this logic, shows just how little sway New Zealand stuff have. They ran a clear campaign to get their followers to vote, and it has fallen flat. They clearly don't have many followers. So she's blaming the news media, Denise for not getting us out to vote. Um, I don't know. Uh, have you been excited by the local body elections, Yvonne, or not? No. I, d I went to one meeting because I thought I should. You actually went to a meeting, you crazy oh, yeah, person. No. Well, it's, my new, it's in my new role. It was about housing or homelessness or something. Yeah, and so yeah. I went along because I'm doing comms for this uh, group. And, yeah. and it, was, it was actually quite interesting in a way to see the candidates. I thought that was quite useful, but most people wouldn't go there, really. You, it's just 
I think mostly people are bewildered, don't know who the candidates are, don't particularly care. And, you know, and there's a sense that it's all a waste anyway. I, I think it's disturbing. I think people have lost confidence in the whole local government yeah. process. Well, I've got to say, Bummer, I got a great talkback call the other day from someone in Tower. And they said, why do you bother? We just get the government to appoint our local authority and yes. we're quite happy. You know? Yeah. I think yeah. I, I certainly think that part of the uh, unique universal experience we've all gone through with COVID has left us bruised. We're angrier with each yeah. other in ways we never thought we could be. We are so sick of the government telling us what to do. We're a people who are quite casual, right? We're yeah. quite laid back. Yeah. We don't like a government up in our grills all the time. And any yeah. sort of dem de de demand by authority to pay attention to them at the moment is being flatly rejected. What is going on here? Are people just go, yeah. I'm sick of this. I'm out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hey, yeah, guys. Yeah, I think this really is a payback. Oh, look, I know I yeah. didn't have this down the list of topics, but it has actually been, uh, and that's my bad, it has been quite a dominant issue on this programme this week, a programme called F-Boy Island. Uh, yeah. I interviewed yeah. Louise Nicholas yesterday, who is like the litmus test of sexual violence campaigning, and she called on TVNZ to pull F-Boy Island because it sends the wrong messages about sexual violence and intimate um, partner relationships, she said to men and women. TVNZ, despite our best efforts and us handing out their public relations person's um, um, email address and their head of programming's <laughs> email address, we've heard nothing from TVNZ. I've got calls. I've left three messages on Simon Power's answer phone. Um, but nothing. <laughs> nada. Yeah. Um, what do we reckon? What do we reckon? I'm not asking you as media commentators or free speech experts, just as Common, decent human beings. Uh, what are we doing running this crap on television, uh, Yvonne? I, I don't know what we're doing at all. It's not really a pub, public service imperative. It's, I mean, that whole story about the F-boy, the, the chap who you know, alleged to violence or whatever, it's not a failure of casting. It's a failure of commissioning. Why on earth do they have a programme like mm. that? I mean, it's so bogus. The but we've been a so week. Bogus. We've been a week and there's been nothing from TVNZ. Yeah. I know, it's shocking. And it I said, shocking. are they going to get Carmel Santa Maria to do, do the continuity for it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Bomber, what do you reckon? And I know you're a liberal, uh, touchy-feely kind of guy. I'm also getting messages today about this choking issue that yeah. is really weird and concerning me. But, but Bomber, even you would say this is a bridge too far and it's time that some grown-up at Television New Zealand gets hold of this issue. At no point did anyone, anyone inside TVNZ sitting around the office go, wait a second, fuck boy island? What are we doing? What is this? Yeah. What yeah. awful crap is this? At no point. See that their problem with the story is, oh, it turns out one of the F-boy contestants happened to be an actual F-boy. So that, and, but we've edited them out, so there's no problem. This is deplorable from the public broadcast. So, look, if you're a public, uh, if, you're, if you're a private company and you want to make this stuff, Knock yourself out. But as the public broadcaster, this is why the RNZ, TVNZ merger has to go through. This is an organisation chasing... What? Chasing so ratings. TVNZ... Oh, look, I, I just think we'll get the, the worst of both worlds. we get the same shameless think, crash, think, crash do, commercialism do of TVNZ radio, and fix the woke liberalism of Radio New Zealand. Do you, do you think that Radio New Zealand would have agreed to F-Boy Island, that Kim Hill would be a judge... They would, they would not have allowed this nonsense to go that far because they, we need public broadcasting that is focused on public broadcasting ethos. That's what we yeah. need. Well, the same, the same thing that gave us fire and bloody fury? Yeah. Well, well yeah. you know, I don't think that's good public broadcasting, though. No, no. Well, no, I just say, no. I just I say, let's get rid of all public broadcasting. public broadcasting. Let's the market decide. Let organisations buy the platform. Through their the sheer problem, body of the work. Problem, the, problem, the problem then is when you allow the market to decide, like we've pretty much got at the moment, look at how yeah. the real estate, look at how the real estate industry puts so much advertising to the New Zealand Herald, and the New Zealand Herald always says it's a great time to buy a house. You never yeah. get those interests mm. challenged if you don't have a sphere that isn't focused on chasing ratings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the market is deciding. That's why you've got F-Boy Island. That's the, the very right. reason. Yeah, because I think Panasonic right. might be thinking twice about being the sponsor for F-Boy Island, to be honest. 
Yeah. And I think they, I think they, I actually am going to say this, people said, oh, we should ban the sponsors and everything. And because I'm against that sort of cancel culture, I said, oh, I'd like to say we should do that. I think, no. But I'll tell you what I would say to Panasonic. You have a chance. You have a chance to be the grown-ups in the room and get a real public relations and free speech victory out of this if you say we are not, we don't want to be associated with a program that that's, ba- that's that bad. Um, well, it's surely the issue. The issue is surely if, if, it, if it was a private company, it's the fact that it's the public broadcaster. Yes, yeah. This the is issue. a demeaning show to the young men involved, yes. the young women involved, the audience who are watching, and the people who made it. This yeah. is the meaning yeah. all round. We don't need this as the public broadcaster. Yeah, all right. It's worse on TVNZ On Demand if you watch Naked Attraction. That's, <laughs> that's TVNZ On Demand, and it is much more offensive, but I seem to be, I have an unseemly addiction to it, but that's another thing. Oh, you see, <laughs> now, now this is interesting. <laughs> now this is interesting. So there is a guilty pleasure. You will watch that sort of show. Well, I, never, I, don't, watch the, I don't watch the FBoy Island and those ones, but Naked Attraction is so bent... It's so, it's so disturbing and so fantastic that I just can't stop watching. And I know it was probably cheap. At least it wasn't my tax dollars going into it. Yeah, it they bought dollars. the rights for F Boy Island, and then they made yeah. their own New Zealand version of it. I also think deep, deep down in my soul, bomber, the poor people, artistic people, lighting people, camera people, makeup artists. Who I don't know if it took them months or something. Imagine the soul sucking yeah. destruction. Of your psyche, if you have to work on a program like that, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't even believe the premise, the idea that you're looking for love on television in front of millions of people. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's so bogus. It's you know. It's and often, I just think really when, when we when when we have so many actual issues in this country yeah. right now. 27,000 on emergency housing wait lists. More kids in cars than when 2017 when the Labor government first came in. When we've got 200,000 kids in poverty. When you've got entire generations locked out of home ownership. When we're spending a million dollars a day kettling beneficiaries into dangerous motels. What's the public broadcaster serving us? And when Fuck Michael Hill jewellers are being ramrated at regular intervals too. Right. But, but, those, right. but those issues don't sound like fun programming, do they? Am I going to turn into... But those all, issues are the things? public broadcaster's responsibility for taxpayer yeah, infrastructure. Oh, we that let RNZ like do that. Oh, yeah. Can I note, too, Susie Ferguson's leaving re- Morning Report today after eight years. Quitter, is what I say as someone who did it for 14. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fly-by-nighter, Susie Ferguson. Flits in and flits out after eight years. Uh, and I will, in a collegial sense, say to uh, Susie... Uh, uh, enjoy the Lions. It is a hard and uh, brutal, yeah. um, it's a brutal yeah. regime uh, to work for. You're up at 3.34 most mornings and, it, and it's a hard gig. So yeah. um, I, I do, in a personal sense, wish you well. I think a lot of the journalism they do is complete rubbish, of course. Guys, we didn't <laughs> get to the Roy Morgan poll, um, but I suspect we will. Now, Yvonne, I just want a quick, uh, some 360-degree feedback here. How was yeah. that? How was the what? Oh, just the... taking part in Free Speech Fridays. Oh, today? Oh, it was fun, actually. I was actually dreading it, but it was fun. I thought I'd have to be very... Yeah, you were dreading it. It needs to be longer. Hey? Needs it needs to be, to be longer. Oh, be, yeah, OK. Yeah, because we didn't talk about the bus driver. And I did oh, yeah, the bus the drivers. Shortage. Bugger the, the bus Morgan drivers. Poll. There's so much to talk about. All right. Yeah. Um, well, look, I'm looking at that. Uh, Martin, I know you and I are doing a... Um, we're recording a special um, election. Yes, we're doing we're podcast. doing election preview special in, 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 in Wellington next week, and we're very excited oh. that you're along. Yeah. All right. right. Hey, look, oh. I thank you both for a really good Free Speech Friday session. Enjoy your weekends. Uh, thank we will you. talk again soon. That is uh, Martin Bomber Bradbury, Yvonne Van Dongen, our Free Speech Friday panel. What an interesting and great week it has been. Um, and now, after nine o'clock, of course. Uh, Michael Lords will continue to shamelessly promote his colleague, um, Shane. He's not listening. I love doing this because he's got no idea what I'm saying about him. Um, He will continue to uh, promote Shane Norton in his campaign to be a first-time local body politician. Um, It's so hilarious listening to them yesterday. And and it's like Michael is the Svengali, the Machiavelli. Shane, I can make you powerful, you know. Um, It's great stuff. Uh, It's Friday. Um, It has been a lot of fun. Ben, 
Thank you for a great week. Kelly, thank you for a great week. Thank you for all your calls. Thank you for listening. Greg Treble, you're welcome on the program anytime.